understand someone's needs, it's a lot easier. I think you can validate someone's needs and feelings. You can create a lot of trust just by asking a lot of really good questions. Um, questions are good for creating urgency too. Like if you have a goal and everything like that. Um, yeah. That's that, for me personally, I think that's the best thing is not talking, but listening. Right. And that not only helps you build rapport, but yeah, like you were saying, helps you find out what their needs are and more specifically narrow what, what's the best fit for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I 100% agree. And then I think too, I mean, just asking them in a fun way to where you can just really get someone open-minded, right? So tomorrow I'm going to show how to pitch like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars orders plus, but you need to like, they need to be like kind of prepped to receive that. Does that make sense? So I think it really just kind of opens the door a lot for them to think bigger, right? So like, here's a great question you could ask. Hey, Miss Jones, what would it feel like to never have to buy another knife, fork or spoon or pot or pan for the rest of your life? And you'll just see their face just kind of melt. They're just like, that'd be pretty sweet, right? Another one is if like I'm showing a cool knife and they're like, oh, I really want that one. Or if they're bringing up problems and that kind of stuff. Like, like tomatoes, pineapples, whatever. I'm like, oh, how frustrating is that? Yeah. They're like, oh, it's the worst. It sucks. You know what I mean? I think questions draw really good emotion. And then also just like confirmation questions throughout the demo. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You say confirmation questions? Yeah, yeah. Just like yes questions, right? Isn't that cool? See how easy that is. Isn't that awesome? You'll just get a ton of yeses. And I mean, the more you can get them to say yes in the demo, the better. Would you also say asking intellectual questions for with more drawn out intellectual answers be equally as important or maybe more than asking those simple yes or no questions? Or do you can think you give like an easier? example? Can you give an example? Um, Does that give you a right answer? I guess it would be like, uh, hey, Mrs. Jones, uh, what do you, what sort of uh, what sort of items do you see yourself using this knife on or? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think a good one is like, do you sometimes maybe every once in a while blank, right? Do you ever cut tomatoes? Do you ever cut apples, right? Do you ever do potatoes? That kind of stuff. Yeah, you can definitely, I see what you're asking, more open-ended questions, definitely. <laughs> open-ended questions are great, right? Because they'll just kind of tell you, right? There's a lot of different um, great ones that you can ask, I think. Um, also, just being aware of like who you're with too, right? Like not just what you're saying, but how what you're asking is landing, like, so, I, like, I don't know if you guys are, are you all familiar with the CVI, like builders, bankers, merchants, that kind of stuff? Yeah, nice. Sorry, say it. I said, are you, are you folks familiar with like CVI? I know some of you are, right? Max, are you like builder, banker? Building character? Is that what you said? No, no. Can, can you all, can everyone else hear me? Am I, is my mic bad? If everyone else, yeah, it may just be me. My mic is low and I don't have my... Uh, Oh, oh sorry, no, you're ears, good. You're ears, inefficient. Good. I don't have my earbuds, so. No, you're good. So what I, ba basically to simplify, if someone's more direct and straightforward, wow. you'll pick that up by asking more questions, right? If someone is like super merchanty and open, you ask them a question, they'll just run with it. Just like let them talk. So you can also like build a relationship through asking questions. So for me, I, that that is like my superpower, I feel like, is just asking really good quality questions and you'll get really good quality answers. You'll understand their needs, their opportunities to connect with them. So for me, per, again, I'm just one person, but I'd say that for me is like a good secret sauce because questions open the door for rapport, trust, all that. Good question. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And then just ro round out, like be killer at closing funding recommendations. That's how, you know, that's how you'll walk out with a sale. Good question. Cool. Now let's got Pregunta. Try to like spread the love here. Gerald, your background's fire, by the way. I appreciate that. Huh? I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Lydia, get handers. What's up? Oh, never mind. Cool. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, was again, just, I, can... I was just sitting like this, <laughs> taking yeah, cool. notes. Yeah, I'm gonna lose time. I can I can just riff if you want, but I mean, I, I prefer questions so I can like directly meet your needs. You know, it's closing. Oh, I have a question. What do you got, Paige? Okay, so they were talking about it in the other break breakout room, but 
they were taking a minute to spit out the question. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to come here and ask you the same question they asked. Cool. How do I speed up the way I talk about my presentation? What do you mean? Like, basically, I've been getting faster over time because I've been getting it in my head or whatever. But how do I make sure that I meet the time necessary so by the end, people are not talking about they have to go before I get my recommendations? So that's a that's a really good question. So is it specifically put because you want to get recommendations? Yes. Okay. I, I This is great. So one thing is build killer rapport. So that's one thing that I'd probably connect with your manager on is build really good rapport because I've literally had demos and this is not often, but I've had appointments that are like three hours. Don't recommend it. But anytime I do, it's like $2,000 plus of a sale and they're psyched about it. You know, so at 30%, you know, it's, it's definitely worth the time. And here's a little, little like secret sauce nugget. Before you ask for recommendations, just be, hey, I'd like my demo. Cool. You, you got like five minutes. You good? And they'll say, oh, yeah, I got five minutes. And then you can go. And now they have no reason to say they got to run. Oh, okay. I can't remember what CSP I learned that from. And it's like, yeah, but you got like five minutes. You good? They're like, oh, yeah, you yeah, cool. And again, if you create a comfortable enough atmosphere, they'll hang on for five minutes. So All right. Like, yeah. yeah. And then just don't get in your head. Like, just keep the demo super simple. Like, Pete, you, you're good at the job, right? So just keep things super simple, have fun, build good rapport, and then just ask that before. And then you got, to, you know, you got five minutes. Okay. Last Great. thing I'd say is make it a fun experience. So okay. anytime they give you two or three, show, hey, that's, give me a virtual high five. That's a, thank you so much. You have no <laughs> idea how much that helps out, Miss Jones. Then you get to two more, you become a sponsor, and she's at five. Like, Miss Jones, I hate even numbers, or I hate odd numbers. So you got to give me one more. <laughs> Boom. My lucky number is seven. You know what I mean? You can just yeah. have a lot of fun with them. And if they're excited about it and you're appreciating them for it, they'll give you more. Okay. And they also helped me in the other breakout room because this was something I was go I was telling myself I was gonna do, but I didn't do it, and they told me to do it, so I'm gonna do it. But I'm trying to figure out how to make more sales. You're you're not gonna like my answer. Do more demos. Okay. Well, I know that <laughs> that's what we talked about. So so do what do you say? I said, I know that I'm saying like in the demo, like specifically when I'm in it, how do I make more sales while being in it already? Oh, here, here's a great resource for you. Cause I mean, I could tell you a million things, go to vector connect, go to library, go to the video library document, whichever, and just type in closing. Like pay, if you like, if you're really committed, like I want to be a better freaking closer. Like I want to get better at this. There's thousands of hours of content that you could look at. So I, I could give you a, I could give you a bunch of different tips and that kind of stuff. But I think it's a big, if you're serious page, like I want to get better at closing on demos. I want to have a 90% closing ratio. Go on Vector Connect and just look up any closing talk that you can give, right? Because it'd be like, I'd be this close. And then they'd be like, well, I had to do this and that or whatever. Okay, I, like, I, I got I a gotta, I gotta tip for you then. Create okay. urgency. Okay. Like you need, you need to have a goal. It can be anything like just anything that is a goal and a deadline. I want to have okay. I want to sell three sets by Monday. That's my goal. This, uh, miss, uh, miss Jones this week. So if you want to buy all three, I can take the rest of the week off and call it. I'm just kidding. Miss Jones. Yeah. Right? And I like the one thing somebody said about telling them that, Oh wait, no, somebody else said this. Never mind. It wasn't even. Okay, cool. But yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. I, I would create some urgency, have a goal, right? And just give them a reason to get it today. It can be oh, a okay. goal you have, an appointment goal, could be a push. You can you can set up your own personal push too, but like you can you can push whenever the heck you want. Right? You don't have to wait for us to tell you to do that. So you okay. can just set up a big mega week and say, This is my mega week, Miss Jones. I really want to go big. I want to sell ten thousand this week. So if you want to just get, you know, get ten thousand, I could take the next week off, right? I'm just kidding, Miss Jones, right? <laughs> the reason I say that stuff, like three sets, 10K, is because yeah. now how small does a thousand bucks seem when I say 10,000, three sets? Yeah. Really open. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I be kind of scared sometimes because on the phone, we sit here and tell them that they don't have to get anything. And that is true. But then we sit here and ask them, can they get something? Like, it just feels weird. You're making it weird. 
I'm just, I'm, so just that's, being, I, I'm just being real with you, Paige. It's only okay. weird if you make it weird. Do you, because I know do you, if somebody let, let told me, finish, me. Let me finish. Okay. Do you believe in the product? I haven't used it yet. Well, ba- <laughs> ba- based, well, win some, right? But based on like the testimonials, all the sales that you're seeing, even just the Cucka owner video where like it shows like people that are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and it's the best investment they ever made. Yeah. You need to get more product conviction then. That's it. Like for me, I am totally comfortable someone spending $9,000 with me, right? Okay. Like, they, yeah. like I'm, I, I'm like, if it's a $30,000 order, do you want to pay it in full or split it up? Right. Because yeah. I know how awesome it is. They're going to be seven, like 70 years down the road. Their great grand, their grandkid is going to knock like the barbecue tongs off the grill. It's going to break. And we're going to send them a brand new one for free. Okay. Like that yeah. is kind of freaking ridiculous that we do that. Right. My brother yeah. always tells me this. He's like, you shouldn't discount Cutco at all. He's like, Cutco is the deal. You should not disc. He's like, if I sold it to you guys, I wouldn't discount it at all because it's worth so much more than what people pay for it. Right. Yeah. So get some, pro- get some product conviction, go to vector connect. If you want, go to like view or uh, go to orders and you can hit buy Cutco samples. You can get Cutco for like so, so ridiculously affordable. Right. You can get like a can opener for like 11 bucks. So just get it, try it out. Right. Yeah. You you up your product conviction. They're page. They're not buying Cutco. What they're buying is they're buying your conviction in Cutco. Okay. That's what they're buying. Right. So start there. Sound cool. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Rip it up. Get conviction. Rip it up after this. Okay. Okay. That was like three in a row. So I got to move on. Anyone else have a question? They're great questions though. What do you got Lydia? Thanks, Gerald. Okay, this time I actually do have a question. So, <laughs> All right, cool, tight. <laughs> um, okay, so I have recently had some problems, like, like I want to go on fire and like sell really hard and keep pushing to get, you know, what sell like the smallest item if I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, sometimes I feel like morally wrong when, like, um, for instance, like I've had some demos where. Uh, when I'm catching up with them, they're like, uh, yeah, something happened. And due to the, like, due to COVID, I lost my job and now I'm working 80 hours a week or things like that. Or like, you know, we, our family has been going through some hardships recently, like, you know, catching up with old friends. And so then I feel like guilty trying to push this expensive product on it, even though I completely believe in the product I've had cut co my family for like generations. Oh, but, nice. like, yeah. So I, I grew up using this, so I, I respect it, but at the same time, I know it's a big investment and so sometimes I just like really struggle with that. Like, how do you, like, have you in, had instances like that? How do you work through that? Yeah. So one, take the pressure off yourself. If they don't buy, it's cool. You know what I mean? And, and, and this is kind of like, a, I don't want anyone to take this tip the wrong way, but as you're dropping down, if you feel like they're like so apprehensive and so like not into it, I'd ask, Hey, do you mind if I drop down for practice? You can tell me the no the whole way. It's totally fine. I'm just, re- I'm like, you can tell me no the whole time, but right? that's totally fine. And when they like, they see that you're cool and they're cool. What do you think happens to their guard? It's down. So then you'll be shocked when people actually buy as like, I'm like, Miss Johns, you can tell me no the whole time. Like I can take it. I'm cool. Right. Do you mind if I drop down for practice? You can tell me no the whole way. And I'll show the galley. They'll say no starters. No five piece. No. But then by the time I can take the buy through, get one of the free gadget. If they like it and they'd use it and they want to get it, they like it. They use it. They want to get it and they'll get it. Does that make sense? So it's their decision. It's really up to them. And then a lot, the second tip is qualify your recommendations really well. Ask, who do you know that could buy everything in the book? Who do you know that would just love this stuff? Who do you know that really appreciates quality? Like put yourself in front of those types of people. That's like a secret sauce that um, I really like to share with my reps is like, for me, I was super part-time my first semester. I only did like three or five demos a week and I made 10 grand. And it's because every time I saw someone, I knew it was a great prospect and not all, you know what I mean? I had no sales and that kind of stuff. But I think when you can qualify your recs and just put yourself in front of the right people, that that they're the right people, you know? So ask, like, ask who lives in a gated community, right? Ask, I don't know, ask a drive, like, Lucky, uh, a CSP in our division asked, who do you know it's on the 85 bears for like a year? And now six of them are his customer, 
like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of nuts, but yeah, just ask for what you want. And then again, as you're dropping down, if you feel like there's some tension, take a second to build rapport, just catch about, uh, catch up about other stuff. And if you can tell it to us, Hey, do you mind if I drop down for practice? You can tell me no the whole way. It's totally fine. Right. And then when they feel comfortable, they'll be open to tell you when they actually do want something. Does that, does that kind of help? Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Good question, by the way. I'm sure you're not the only one that was thinking that because I've been there too. I get it. What do you got, Joseph? Appreciate the hand. <laughs> um, so first question is just about what you were just talking about. Um, so basically, if like those disengagement, then just stop what I'm doing and start building some more report and then get back into it. Yes, exactly. It is so crazy. I was at a fair and show and someone was deciding between like, it was like a buy three, get one or something like that. And then I, they were like, oh, I don't know if I want to get it today. I don't know. And it wasn't me. It was a CSP that I was field training with. And then I like, I took a lap around the show and I came back and they got a flatware chest and the buy three get one free. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what, why did I leave? What the heck happened when I was gone? He's like, I just built a porch, talked about like my wife. They just talk with people. So that's what, that's what I recommend. If you feel like there's like that tension to just connect, just like, like just build some report about other stuff, man. Dissolve yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, you know, you've probably heard this, but your demonstration is more like a conversation than a presentation. Right. So the more uh, we- actually no. Oh, well, there you go. There's a bar, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's already great, Carlos, but, uh, I did actually have a question that I was, that, uh jd sent me to ask you oh okay. Um, okay what how did i get so ugly no 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 no. he usually has um <laughs> but it was um how, how how to build uh how to like rebuild a good names list i'm going to ask connor thomas about this tomorrow as well but you know he said just ask you today yeah, so, Con- Connor's a, so Connor's a great one. I'll save most of it for his message. I think the number one thing is you just got to believe that you can, right? You, like that, that seriously is it, right? I think that's where it starts. Like if you haven't seen every teacher that you've had from preschool through where you're at in school now, you have more people that you can, sh- including lunch ladies. You have more people that you can show, right? So I, I have a question to- though. Mm-hmm. Um. How would you actually even get in touch with those people? Um, like, like, because like lunch ladies, like you know, like yeah, I talked to them. They saw me every day for like (laughs) four years. But do I know more than their first name? If that, usually the first name, but uh, yeah, if you don't know their last name, I like if you don't know the last name, there's not much you can do about it, right? Yeah, exactly. But for but for teachers, you call them Mister and Mrs. Blank. Yeah. If it's like you, you totally know them in your manual um there's like you can look them up on facebook there's a facebook approach i mean they, like you can go to like whitepages.com and just search it's kind of weird but you can just search for people and get their number right so it's public yeah but um yeah there, that was my second one is fast people search and then third i'd recommend just like looking them up on facebook right it's another good way to do it and there's a facebook oh my goodness four, that four sounds demos. like a stalker <laughs> exactly Oh my well, that, hey, you you'll get less names. That's okay with you. If that's okay with me. No, because I was just <laughs> that's talking fine. to the in the other breakout room about how to get my teachers numbers, and they said go to your school directory, and I did that before, and all I found was their email. So that is a good approach, but that's kind of, I mean. <laughs> I tried going to do that to get the directory um, and all of them listed it for numbers, like their school numbers. So yeah. in the summer, like I can't contact any of them. So I have all their numbers, but it immediately goes to voicemail. So yeah. That's my- yeah. I mean, a- ask your managers for an email approach, but you get like, if you want to do it, you got to want to do it. You know what I mean? Okay. If you're like, I'm going to ask questions, but be combative with the response, then like you, you just don't want to do it. But I mean, another good option is LinkedIn for your teachers. Most of your educators have a LinkedIn profile with contact info. That works great too. You can use that, right? But I mean, if you want to get them, then get them. You know, and even just think like, like who sold you your car? Who sold the family their house? Who cuts your hair? Like, like get. Like, oh, I got some more people to call. 
there you go cool yeah just get creative anyone the more demos you do you'll get more comfortable showing more people um so to follow back into the uh facebook approach um is there like a like url or a link to that i can pull up just so it i have it for later it should be in your manual um there's if you flip it's like in the back half of the manual it yeah just, i i don't have a physical manual due to how my area is doing it so oh are you doing like the my vector demo or something like that uh it's like get vector trained.com that's what i've been getting told you know, taught you to do okay let um, me sh- let me sh- i'll sh- screen share this and you can take a picture of it let me find it pull this bad boy up yeah, I know some of us have like different demos. Let me pull this up. Just take a like a picture, a screenshot of this. Yeah, yeah, got snimp and tool out. Let me see. All righty, here you go. Then David, it looked like you had a question after that. Here you go. Oh no. no, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So just uh, screenshot this. Yeah. Sure. That works great. Let me get this out of the way. Um, but so, but where would I get that PDF file itself? Um, excuse me. So, so I I would probably uh, ask your manager. manager. Who's your manager? Uh, Lucy. Uh, oh, Lucy. Lucy okay, great. This is great. All right. Um, I would probably confirm with her. I just don't want to like throw a bunch of different wrenches in for your demo. So, th- I mean, this is the only um part of it for facebook on here if you want okay. the whole thing just confirm with her that it's cool you know what i mean i just don't want to like want to like give you a bunch of extra content that doesn't like yeah it. yeah like it like no i get it i get it um i'm looking for more content because what content i currently have isn't exactly gelling with me sure like, yeah yeah, just, yeah. Go, just go ahead and ask it's cool and then again vector connect is an audio library video library you can get a bunch of nugs from there too yeah yeah, yeah for sure cool 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 What's up, Dylan? Hey, Ava. What's up, David? Yeah, so I had a question. Uh, kind of, it's along the lines of like, so I have a bunch of connections from my father, who is a professional, okay? He's a scientist. Hmm? He gave me a bunch of his contacts who are also male scientists. So the majority of people that I'm kind of getting demos with are professional contacts of my father who are wealthy individuals but they're men and I'm being told like, uh, I shouldn't really be presenting to just single men, but I want to know that's like where a lot of my sales have been coming from. So should I keep pursuing that or should I try and switch it? So that I would kind of leave that up to like, trust your manager's judgment on that because I mean, they, they can probably afford whatever the heck they want, but yeah, yeah. They can afford whatever they want. Right. But I mean, it's not so much about price. It's more about value. So like in my experience, when I see single guys, it's usually not the biggest sales, like a couple things here, a couple things there, but it like just sell you, whoever, whoever your manager is, just sell them on why you think they'd be good. Like you like your manager want, wants what's best for you. So like you want to sell, sell your manager first on why you think they'd be a good prospect. And if they're good, then yeah, they'll go ahead and let you show them. And then I had another question. So uh, kind of the nature of uh, who I am and my family, we have a lot of international contacts. Mm-hmm. And I know Cutco doesn't do any sort of shipping internationally. And I kind of wanted to ask why that is and what can I do to try and um, get those people Cutco that are overseas? Because I don't know if you know, but like the ship overseas nowadays, it's like probably $100 a package at least. Yep. That's basically my commission. Mm-hmm. So I'm paying more money to ship them their Cutco than I would even make in selling them the Cutco. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering. So that's above my pay grade. I'm just, you know, it's just like, I, I, I can't handle that for you. Um, but I mean, again, you kind of said it like, yeah, it is expensive to ship it. I don't know if it's a hundred dollars cause we've done it before. I, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of, that'd be way at like on the higher end. Um, but I mean, you, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just kind of is what it is, man. Like I, you can email, you know, Cuckoo Corbin, if you want, but I mean, that's just kind of the way that like things are done. But, uh, yeah, I, think I could speak to you other than that Cutco guy. What, what is his email? Which Cut- one? Corbin, you said, or who? You said Cutco Corbin, or no, I said corporate. 
Oh, corporate. Yeah, I, yeah. Tra- transparent. I didn't even, again. It's above my period. I don't even know who the person would be. Um, okay. So yeah, so that is one question that I can't help you out with. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, though. Yeah, just being real. Cool. Is that Esperanza in the background? What up, Esperanza? What's up, player? I know. Oh my gosh. Hey, Carlos. I, I was just I telling them how great you are and how they should look up to you. Oh, stop. I appreciate it. Esperanza is the best. She's just, she's just talking to herself in the Zoom. She's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other preguntas, folks? I, I can riff. I'm good. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rex, best way to get as many Rex as possible, go. Best way to get a lot of Rex. And then I was um, when you're seeing a, a couple things. So first, when you're seeing a recommendation, right? Like, let's say like Gerald recommended me to David. When I'm seeing David, I'll just talk about how much fun I had with Gerald and I'd let him know how many recommendations he gave me. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Gerald recommend. Oh yeah. He was, we had a blast. He got this set. He recommended me like 10 people. It was, we had a blast. Right. Um, that's one, just say, say it as many times as you can. Right. Um, trying to think. I would also recommend having a recommendation notebook, right? So for me, I got a binder. So when I did my virtual demos, when I said, hey, I get paid every time I show Cutco, but I can only show it to people I've been personally recommended to. So what I'd love for you to do when I'm cleaning eyes, you could jot down like three to 400 people who you think might be nice enough to sit down. I'm just kidding, Miss Jones. Most people will give me like 10, 15 people you think might be nice. And then as you're flipping, what are they seeing? 10, 10, 10. So I think just that social proof, when they see that's what people do, that's what they'll do, right? Um, also, oh, here's here's a huge, huge tip. Because especially like for, like if you're like 30K, like, I don't know where you're at sales wise, but one, uh, one thing that I recommend is, especially if you're newer, most people will start off just giving you like one to five. You'll get some people that give you like 10, 15, but it's your job to help them build it up, right? If I were to just ask you, who do you know right now? It'd be so open-ended, you wouldn't be able to think of everyone. But if I were to say, hey, who do you know that lives in this town? Who do you know that lives in that town? You're gonna think of like one or two people, right? I don't know towns around, I don't know towns around you guys, right? Who do you know that lives here? Who do you know who lives Chesterfield? I think that's one about you guys, right? Who do you know that lives here? Who do you know that lives there? Um, who do you know who? Like that is a phrase that pays, you should say that at least five to 10 times in your demo. Who do you know they could buy everything? Who do you know who this? Who do you know who that? Because they'll just keep coming up with more people. Right? Um, you, you just got to kind of help them help you. Um, also, really tie them into your goals, right? So for me, I'd be like, I, I've said this a couple of times, uh, for those of you who have been out here the whole time, but I'd say, hey, Miss Jones, my goal for this push is to sell 15,000 bucks. I want to pay that in full or split it up. You can do it however you want. I'm just kidding, Miss Jones. But I, 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 you don't have to buy anything, Michael. <laughs> like me and Cutco enough to introduce you to some of your friends so that I can hit my appointment goal of 40 demos. Does that make sense? Yeah. Carlos, do you like do random wrecks that you don't even know? Do you think they like actually care about what your goals are though? Yeah. If you do a good enough job selling and enrolling them, absolutely. If they don't do it, you're doing it wrong. They definitely do. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> Yeah, good question. Good question. What's up, Justin? So along the lines of the random person and the enrolling them with your goals, um, do they care? Because it's kind of like a story. It's um, more information. It's like entertainment kind of ish or like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think that. Um, well, one, one of the six human needs is just like contribution. Like people love contributing to stuff. Right. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of human. That's why if something awesome happens to you, you got to call someone to tell them about it because it becomes more, it becomes bigger. Right. Yeah. I, that think makes all, sense. I think also if you attach a deep enough purpose to what you're doing, it's not what you're doing. It's like how you're packaging it. Right. Um, so for me, like I, this, you know, this might, some of you might think this, like this is kind of like deep, but for me in my demos, I tied it into like how I want to be a good dad. Like I want to be reliable. Right. When, when stuff hits the fan, I want to know that people can rely on me. I can make decisions. I can be decisive. I can bring the best out of myself when I need to. 
So that's why I'm putting, I'm like working myself to the bone because I know I'm growing myself as much as I can. So that way I know I can be someone that can be relied on. I can show up when I need to, right? So like, I think the purpose that you're tying behind things really matters, like long-term and short-term. I even had a customer that had everything cut. You know how someone says they have everything cut and they have like a studio set, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> that was all time, right? But she literally had the cookware, the flatware, the knives. I don't, she had the K-bars. Don't know why. Her name's Janet McCarr. She's like 70 years old. She had no business having those, but she had them. She had like garden tools, everything. And I was sharing my goals with her. I was trying to win a trip to Cabo. I wore a sombrero on my demos, right? I like showed pictures of the resort that I was on. I was like, I'm waking up at 7 a.m. on calls. I'm doing six, seven, eight demos a day. I'm working my tail off. I want like, I literally had a picture of the resort. I'm like, picture me there. That's what I'm working for. All my buddies are sleeping in, but I'm, I'm grinding out Miss Jones because I want to win this thing so bad. So my goal here isn't to sell you $10,000 of the Cutco. I just hope you like me and Cutco enough to introduce me to some of your friends so I can hit that goal 40, uh, 40 appointments. She goes, Carlos, how far are you away from your goal? And I said, 1,700. She bought 1800 in gifts, right? It, it's it, so yes, when you enroll and you have a strong purpose behind what you're doing, cut, like we're not selling freaking like paper. We're not selling like keys. Like we're selling a really great product regardless. So when you can like enroll them in your goals and they get hooked up with a sick product, it's easy decision to say yes. And like, you're like, this is how I thought of my demos. If I saw someone in a grocery store, like a week later, I would want to like, how do you want that interaction? I would be like, oh God, I don't want them to see me. I have people call like, hey, did, did you win that trip? Did you get that scholarship? Like they like when you do a good job sharing, like they want to be a part of it. Even like yeah. sell, no sale, all that. Right. So that's kind of the philosophy. I'm like, if I saw them in a grocery store, how would I want that interaction to go? Because you get a follow up. What's up? So then the goal is to uh package what you're saying and enroll in in enrolling them in your goals you are making it so that you you are trying to make them feel good like that is what it all is i mean i'll receive it however you want like most people i think care about my goals i mean i just want them to know why i'm working so hard right? Like the, yeah. the purpose really matters. Like people hate running and people hate walking, but they'll do five K's and donate a bunch of money for the purpose of it. Does that make sense? So like yeah. they, they, I guess so. Yeah. Like they just feel good about it. Even if they don't buy anything, they don't give you any recommendations. They're going to look back and be like, that was a really cool experience. And that's kind of like the bottom line for me when I do demos, I just really want to provide an awesome experience, whether they get $8,000, $800, dollars or nothing. Give me hundred racks, 50, 10, none. Right. I just wanted to be like, Hey, that was a really cool experience. Right. Yeah. And that's a cool opportunity that we get. You know what I mean? Like you can leave people better than you found them. Right. Yeah. They can look back and like have a really cool experience. Right. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my merchant heart speaking. Um, but, but seriously, it's true. Right. I had people text me like after I leave the demo, like that was really cool. I had like, they'd seen cut code demos before, but like when you have good goals and you can enroll them, it's like, that was a really unique experience. Cool. Good question. So also like, get like try and cultivate uniqueness by yeah yeah and again you'll get it just do you know it's uh, people hate this answer but it's like do more demos like you'll figure it out it's kind of like if you've ever played a video game with a kid before like i i I don't play video games like i suck i die right away but for them they're like they're just taking everybody out it's just because for them like they can anticipate they've played the game they have the intuition does that make sense so you'll develop that the more you do it okay good question thanks carlos yeah totally man Absolutely. I gotta take my jacket off. I'm getting like, I want to start. I do. I want to get on the phone, man. It's the only downside of being a DM. I can't do demos anymore. Cool. What else? Whoever going to see Carolyn, Dylan, and Jalita, Ava. Hey, Carlos, I'll ask you a question. Carolyn, what's going on? Good to see you. Good to see you too. As if I can't ask you any questions since you're <laughs> but. <laughs> so while I was on the phone jam, I scheduled a demo with one of my friends. She's an old coworker of mine. Mm-hmm. Totally didn't know that her husband was a chef and I don't want to completely bomb the demo. How do I make the most of it? I know that like chefs are pretty particular, but how do I make the most of the demo? 
I would ask, what do you what do you look for in a set of knives? And what do you think their answers are going to be? Durable, right? Comfortable, effective, easy to maintain, right? So whatever they say, just match that, right? That's always a really good for anyone, but not just chefs, but really for anyone. But you're absolutely right. They are pretty particular in what they like. But if you ask questions, you can show how Cutco meets all of those things. Any good quality that someone looks for in a knife, we have, right? Um, and then also show all the gifts, show all the accessories, pots and pans, like all that stuff, right? Um, and then also just have fun, right? You can you just keep things super simple. It's just like any other demo. I think that's the one thing I would add. Keep everything else the same. Okay. Good question. Cool. Elijah, looking swole, man. <laughs> cool. What else? Miss Jones. Yeah, it's funny. I ask questions that I asked Miss Jones all the time. Like, okay. Cool. What do you got? Closing. Uh, I love selling cookware. I got. If you have, I got. I could riff on that. I, they don't call me cookware, Carlos, for nothing. Um, uh, cookware, phoning, recs, closing, urgency goals. I got a question, Carlos. I got an answer. Hopefully. All right. So, uh, in two days from now. I'll be with this company for a year, right? But the number one thing that I've struggled the entire year, whole year I've been with Cutco, is always losing motivation, okay? Mm -hmm. I can have my best week, and then I'll go like a whole week doing no demos just because I lost motivation and procrastination got the best of me, right? What are, you, what are your tips on there? Who else has been there, <laughs> right, right? Five and a half years, I've definitely been there, right? Um, one thing. You got to understand first that motivation is fickle. Like you're going to feeling great. You're going to feel bad, like whatever. You're like, we're emotional beings. So you're going to, you know what I mean? You're, you're going to have times we're feeling great. Times we're not feeling great. So I think one, my probably favorite thing I've ever learned in this job is that your habits perform when you don't want to. So I think for you, that's what you want the consistency in is like, you like, I, and again, it can be whatever. I just think making routines, right? Yeah, America Morning is great, right? Making routines when you go into bed, when you're waking up. And it sucks, right? But sucks losing motivation, not making the money that you want when you know that you could be too. So you kind of got to pick which, which suck that you want. The suck of discipline or the suck of regret, right? I don't like the suck of regret. It's my, like my least favorite one, right? Um, so that's the first thing. Um, also, talk to your manager, have a plan every single week. And if they don't set up one with you, keep texting him. Right. I'll just speak from my experience. Josh, like for me, like a lot, I'm one of the most freaking emotional people that you meet. So I texted Josh all the time. Like, dude, we got a PC. We got to talk. I was just real with him. And like, he wants you to do well. Right. He doesn't want you to feel unmotivated. He doesn't want you to like, cause he, like, I know how like the guilt, the shame that follows you, like, Oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing it. Like, we don't want that for you, man. So just like reach out to him. He'll be able to help you out. But I think just the consistency of routine and then also just having a reason of why you're doing what you're doing, right? Um, I, had a, I had a really real conversation with Mike recently just because it's a business and, you know, things are challenging, but I was just reminded of why I'm doing it. Again, I want to, I, if you're on here earlier, I said this, when, when stuff hits the fan and I'm a dad and like I have a mortgage and a family and everything, I need to be able to be strong enough and reliable enough, right? So for me, that's something that I can always tap into, right? So what are things for you that are really meaningful that you can tap into to where it's like, like, because when you have that purpose, everything you do matters, right? And that like, including the fun stuff, including like the lazy time. Did, Elijah, let me give you a little tip. This is kind of contrary to some of the stuff that we teach, but dude, plan your fun stuff first. Like actually put the fun stuff in your schedule first. When you're seeing people, when you're hanging out, when you're doing whatever, put that stuff in your schedule first. You'll just have more stuff to look forward to, right? I'm going to my girlfriend's aunt, and uncle tomorrow, right? We're going to grill out. I like, oh, no one here was on training. Like, uh, like you guys, I run training. Like, I, I give it a thousand percent in training. Go around it. Like, I'm freaking wiped. But for me, like, I know, like, what I'm going to be doing tomorrow and I have that to pull me forward. Does that make sense? So it's easier to be pulled forward than to have to push yourself. So just give yourself some stuff to look forward to, too. And then just ha have a fun budget, too. My buddy Aaron told me this. Also kind of contrary, but like, you, we, yes, we want to make money to save school, that kind of stuff. Dude, 
make some money to like for fun stuff, right? Like, like what, what's something you want to spend like 200 bucks on and just go out and sell, get on the phone. You know, I, I go to riot fest, like every, well, not with COVID now, but I go to riot fest, like every single year. Some I have to look forward to. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend the 200 bucks. I'm going to feel great about it. Right. Some of our district managers love Lululemon. They like ball out for it. Right. Just what's something that you want to spend some money on? Like, dude, Lulu's great, by the way. Super expensive. It's so good. It feels great when you have it. It's how customers feel when they get Cutco, by the way. So just have like, have like a fun budget for yourself, right? Something else to spend money on that you can kind of reward yourself with, right? Um, I can't recap that because I forgot everything I said. But yeah, those are my tips. Good question. Every, everybody has that. It's a good question. Uh, speaking of recaps, I was wondering if you'd be able to uh, go back on the very first thing you said of that question. Uh, just for my journal here, you know, when I write my uh, write my bio, my my, my biography, uh, the first thing you said on that question, something about habits. What was it again? Oh, your habits perform when you don't want to. When you oh, your habits so perform. I was just about to ask that too. All right, I got that. Your habit, yeah. I'll, I'll put that in the chat. Isn't that a bar right there? I heard that. I'm like, Poof. that hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> yeah i definitely wrote that down too that was a good one I, isn't I that so was, true yeah. i was just like oh my god it's crazy 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 and it's kind of like you don't wait for a fire drill or you don't wait for a fire for a fire drill you practice in advance same thing you don't want to wait until you have no motivation to be like, all right what am i going to do like practice that stuff so when again we're like this as human beings who are emotional Practice that stuff so you have something you can rely on. It's like going to the gym. It sucks. You hate it, right? You never want to go. But after you go, it's just like, that was like, I feel a lot better. That was a good decision. It's the same exact thing. I'm glad everyone got that bar. Your habits performing your want to. Yeah, that's, I, I, I think I heard that four years ago. And I think about that almost every single day. <sighs> yeah, it's heavy. Cool. Let's get up, Maddie. Hey, it's uh, The gym loves you, Elijah. What else on anything? Uh, how often do you sell anything else other than knives? Or have you sold anything else like hardware, flatware? Often? Very often. Oh, absolutely, dude. I love it. Yes. Package push, baby. Me and Steven Zhang, we had like SC1. We were just selling the knives. We're like, dude, SC2, we're going packages all day, every day. The call the flat, call the flatware and a set, the beauty and the beat. People love hearing that stuff, right? Yeah, I, I sell stuff all the time. Cookware, flat, like it's, it's, I don't want to say it's weird if I don't, but like I just have so much conviction and I know they're going to get a better deal when I package stuff. I always show it. Do you want like, were you just asking that or do you want to know like how? Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's like, I guess, how, how, you, how would you present that product to them? Be like, hey, here's all these studio, or here's all these sets, here's all these knives. And they're like, okay, cool. Our budget, we, we like, we like the homemaker set. And then, and then I guess, how do you go from there? Or how do you, how are you introduced to those other uh, products like the cookware and uh, kitchen mats even? Have you sold a kitchen mat before? I don't personally sell on this mats. I just haven't really dove into that. That's a lower ticket okay. item just for me. Per I have friends that like sell on house every single order. It's like an easy upsell for them. It's per just personally me. I haven't really dove into those. I'm more like cookware flatware. Okay. okay. So um, how's your, how's your approach with cookware and flatware? So first thing you, you gotta not like the amount of time someone said they had a budget and they spent more than twice what it was that like it, it, it does, it doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter. Like if they want it, they'll get it. You know what I mean? Like it, it happens all the time. Um, I'm going to share this with all you. Uh, copy and paste this in your notes. You're, when you're selling the cookware and flatware, it, it can't be at the end. Like if you wait until the end of the knives, you're too late. You got to start with it. Right. So for me, when I say Cutco is awesome, you can buy sets or pieces and we have tons of accessories and gifts. What I do is I show this. I say, hey, Miss Jones, like you can buy sets or pieces. We have tons of accessories and gifts, pots and pans, forks and spoons. And then I just jump right back into my demo, right? I just show them that we have them first. So that's like front of mind, right? If you want to go, if you want to go deeper, maybe like audio record this because I don't have this scripted out. Or actually, maybe I have this in a document. My training. 
Let me look this up. Selling to co-owners. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let me. I'm gonna post some stuff in the chat here. <laughs> All right, here you go. I'm going to copy and paste some gas into here for you. So for, for me, per, uh, just be real with you, man. Like for me, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on coaching and mentoring to give you these goods. I'm just going to give them to you for free. Thank right. you. Nice. We appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, there you go. And then this is this is kind of a lot, but it's not a lot when you say it. I say... Hey, Miss Jones, most of my customers, I'm probably going to get it wrong because I'm not going to read it. But hey, Miss Jones, most of my customers, long-term vision is to end up with a Cutco kitchen. I don't think that's everything. Right? The idea here is that it's like everything's American made. It's one and done. It's multi-generational. You pick out your set of knives. You pick out your set of cookware, which is the, by the way, only say the best stuff we make to your customer to Cutco owners. Don't tell people that the cookware is better than the knives that they don't have Cutco yet, right? Because they're gonna be like, "All right, just get to the cookware," right? Mm -hmm. But if it's a Cutco owner, I'm like, the cookware, which is the best stuff that we make. You pick out our forever flatware, which is as our biggest discount, right? Yeah. It's so this is the Cutco kitchen, Miss Jones. It's very, very, very expensive. It's very expensive, but. We get what you pay for. That's why I'm happy to show it. Oh, Some excited. people get it all at once because it's a great deal. Most people build up to it over time. Let's jump into the knives first. Right. So I'm planning that long-term vision for them. That that's what most people end up with. And I don't know if you're on when I asked when I gave this question earlier, but I like to say, Miss Jones, what would it feel like to never have to buy another knife, fork, or spoon, or pot or pan for the rest of your life? And they're just like, oh, I can't even imagine. I'm like, cool. We got the perfect thing for you. So the reason you do that is now you're at the beginning, right? They're already thinking about that stuff. So you can go to the knives. And then when you get to the cookware and the flat where it's not like an afterthought, they're already prepped up for it. Does that make sense? Cool. Let me give you a, um, another link here. Dude, this is link central. I'm going to change my breakout. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know if all of you have seen this. Has anyone ever like tried to uh, um, cook eggs in a stainless steel pan before? And then how hard is it to clean it? Look at Carolyn because I already showed her this. I, so I showed her the of our trainings here. Um, this video is just freaking unbelievable. So it's, I'll put it in the link at the end here. I just want to, want to make sure you pay attention. So this video is uh, frying eggs in the pots and pans. Because most people will get like stainless steel because it's really easy to clean, but it's coated with like PFOAs. The American Cancer Society did a bunch of study that shows PFOAs and they scratch off, you ingest it, leads to cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia, all that bad stuff, right? So people get stainless, but stainless is a pain in the ass to clean, right? Ours, uh, I have this all in an approach, by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this stuff tomorrow. But if you can show your customer all they do, they just preheat their pan. They put a little bit of butter down. And I'll ask the same thing that I asked you. I'll ask the customer, hey, Miss Jones, have you ever tried like uh, scraping in, uh, stainless steel pans before? They're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, tell me. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know what just happened. I think something kicked his internet or something kicked him out. I'm sure he'll be right back. I bet I think they moved everyone. Like they moved me into this breakout room or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, they do that. They Mr. that, that, that was really happen. excited about that pan, bro. That was crazy. I know. God, he was getting all pumped about that. Jeez. <laughs> Water was right. good, but now we got Carlos. I have no idea what happened. Someone just took oh, me out. The they took me out too, man. What do I do? Just go you go to the bottom and hit choose breakout room. Ah, oh, I got you. There you go. I was like, dude, I was about to drop some bars. All right, dudes. I, I all of a sudden I was literally in the middle of a conversation, and bam, they're like zipping me out of there. All right, peace. Oh, you're good. See you, man. Keep killing it, brother. All right. Um, yeah, they'll be, they'll be like, "Have you ever like had stuff sticking a stainless steel pan? How frustrating is it?" They'll be like, "Oh, it sucks." They'll be like, "Tell me more." Like it's the like whatever. So I'll play this video. So, and then so I'll, just, I'll say, look, Miss Jones, look at how easy. Now, the best thing to do here with a scramble, and I learned this from a friend of mine who worked in a gourmet omelet shop, is to keep it scrambling. 
Right? Look at how easy it Notice sticks up. Notice how it really doesn't stick to the pan at all. This is That's a rubber stick. spatula. Let's stick it on. And it comes right off the bottom of the pan, no problem. Is that nice? Now, if you want nice, fluffy scrambled eggs, and then here, it's I'll, really easy to just turn. And then I'll go forward a little bit. And then my favorite part to show customers is, look at how easy this cleans up, Miss Jones. For about 30 so for me, when I'm gunning it to the office and I got to make a quick breakfast, go ahead it nice cooks so much like faster and, uh, and it's really easy to clean too. After just a minute or two of cooking, it doesn't take very long at all. And then watch how easy this cleans up. It is freaking good on this. You'll see they slide out of the pan. Look at that. Like that. And here's the best part. When you follow this, Isn't that crazy? Look at the clean and then their it's face, they're just like, oh really my God. Because here's what I want y'all to understand. Like there's frustration with knives, but in my experience doing demos, there's so much more frustration with cookware. Like people are like, I can, I get nonstick, I get stainless. It's a pain in the butt. So let me put this in the chat here. And when there's a lot of like emotion and frustration, there's a lot of opportunity to solve a problem. So there's a link for that. Um, and then you just kind of click through and show like, I recommend you all watching the video, by the way, just so you can understand that's like, I hope you notice that's why I sell the cookware so much is because I believe in it so much and it's expensive. I, I talk, I'm like, Miss Jones, it's really expensive. It's really expensive, but you get what you pay for. And that's why I'm happy to show it. When I show packages, it's really, it's really expensive. Miss Jones, it's really expensive, but you get what you pay for it, so I'm happy to show it. So then by the time I'm like about to quote price, I'm like, Miss Jones, they're like, we get, it's expensive. And I'm like, but, and they're like, but we get what we pay for. So then they're like, I'm in. So then when I'm pitching like $8,000, they're not like, oh my God. They're like, okay, yeah, you said, yeah, you said be expensive. Like I get it. So then, and it's like, I've never had an $8,000 order, but now how easy does like 2000 and spinning up over five, pay 400 bucks today. Does that make sense? I love selling packages. So yes, I sell more than knives all the freaking time. And it also helps me sell a lot more than knives too. Question. A question. Follow-up question mark? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, would you... Ron says that was amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, when it comes to, I, I know you gave me the whole spiel and your take on when it comes to selling everything else other than knives, do you think it's beneficial at all to sit down with the customer and be like, I, what you looking for? And then they say cut cool, or they say, they say cookware, you go straight to the cookware. They say, uh, I don't know, anything else you go straight there. I, I, I honestly, I probably wouldn't just because okay. I'm so confident when you're doing the knives, you're not just building value in the knives, you're building value in Cutco, right? So for me, like, and that's your bread and butter. So stick with that. Like, I, I would not just do like just a cookware demo until you hit 200K and set like 300, whatever. I've never done that before. I know CSPs that have, but keep things super simple so you can keep building the cut code value. And then you can latch the value. Miss Jones, if you like the knives, you're going to love the cookware. If you like the knives, you're going to love the flat. You can just kind of like piggyback the value onto it. And that's the same thing with the knives too. Miss Jen, like for the specialty knives, if you like the trimmer, you're going to love the cheese knife. If you like the petite chef, you'll love the petite santoku. If you like the petite carver, you'll love the boning knife. Just build like the initial value and just use that to like piggyback onto all the other stuff. All right, cool. Question. Cool. What else? Mr. Allen. <laughs> I asked that question too much. I can't tell if Dylan is frozen or if he's just been smiling like that the whole time, but I think he's frozen. Yeah, okay, cool. I was like, he's loving this. Cool, what else? Anyone by that? I think almost everyone's got at least one question. And so I don't care, whatever, whoever. Who that? We got like 15 minutes left, by the way. Just so you know, so feel free to ask whatever. Um, someone might have already asked this, uh, but what has been like your biggest personal struggle um, with sales for Cutco? Biggest per like per like literal personal struggle, or do you like, like my with, struggle with profession? Yeah, with with Cutco, like with sales, like what has been the thing that has been the most and difficult personal. for you? 
Uh, I honestly, I would probably, <laughs> and I've learned that this is a good thing, but my own personal struggle is that it's entirely reflective of me. Like it, like when I don't do good, it's me, right? If I'm like, not like, if I'm not have a good paycheck, I, I can't blame anyone else. So, I mean, that is a good thing because it's like good to learn that personal accountability, but like it sucks when you're learning it, but I mean, it's just honest. So I think, I think that for me is the hardest one is just like, it truly, it like, I, I, I don't know, like I, it sounds dumb, but like I need to work to make money. You know what I mean? Right. And like, it, like, I think when you go the waves, like when I have like two crappy phone jams, two days in a row, I'm like, oh, like expletive here. You know, I, I, I gotta like cover up da- Dylan, dude. He's like making me laugh. Cause he's, I can't, well, uh, I, yeah, honestly, I got two rough phone jams. Like it's tough. You know what I mean? I think, um, another one would probably just be asking for help. Right. Like I, I personally kind of wait too long to, to ask for help to where anytime I do Josh, Mike, whoever is like, why do you need to ask me for help sooner? I'm like, I don't know. You know what I mean? So I think that like just being okay with asking for help sooner, it's not a bad thing. I've come to learn that it's actually a great thing to ask for help because we all do. Like, I think just kind of learning how to be a human being, you know what I mean? Like we lose motivation. We're, you know what I mean? We're emotional. We're not perfect. We're flawed. We all are. Right. I think just kind of coming come to terms with that, I think is challenging, but I mean, it's kind of cool because like also the flip side is when things are great, it's on us and things are tough, like, but you're tougher. You know, so just I like, kind of keep that stuff in mind. Like, so zen right now. <laughs> it, yeah, if you come to our team meetings, you know how things end. It's just like very like kubaya. Right. Great question, though. And any struggle that you have, like everyone else has had. Like, we're all managers. Muriel told me this one time. Dylan, your video is froze for like nine years, man. Um, Muriel told me this one time. Um, yeah, you look so happy when you're frozen, man. It was awesome. Uh, Muriel told me this one time, he said, your own, your biggest problem is that you don't think you should have any. And I was like, Phew. it's a bar right there. Right. Cause we all, we're human beings. Right. Cool. Good question. What do you got, Joseph? You, your setup is so professional, by the way, man. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, just cause I like singing. Yeah. And I didn't like peeking my mic. Um, anyways, but thank you. Um, so my question is, um, like, how to go from the normal demo to also incorporating the cookware selling? Great, great question. Great question. Master the fundamentals first. Right. I think it's the first thing is really get your demo down um, really well. Right. And then I would say just by little bits and little bits, right. Like I I could give you like a literal whole training seminar, three days, um, three days of how to sell cookware, but just add a little bit here, a little bit there. And then when you start selling it, you'll build your confidence, you'll build your conviction, and then you'll sell more and more and more just like selling the knives. Right. So keep it simple a little bit by a little bit. Oh, geez, JD's in here. Um, and then the more you build your conviction, the more you'll sell it. Now, it's just, a pro- just, okay. be patient. just be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace. I think using some of the things that I mentioned really help. Um, and then well, I, got, I guess this is a more direct answer. Understand why people buy it. Like understand okay. the frustrations with regular cookware. Because I didn't sell it until I understood why people hate like nonstick or stainless. Yeah. And then when I understood the frustrations, it was a lot easier to sell. And yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna see if I can convince my mom to get just like one frying pan for eggs, because we do eggs like everyone else, mm-hmm. and just see, see what that's like. Because, like you put, showed in the video, that looks amazing. So I really want to start building up that conviction by actually validating it personally. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have a uh, a sample uh, of of, of cookware? No. You should I get one. Uh, how much are those? 
I honestly, I don't know. It's not, it's on Vector Connect, but it's super, yeah, dude, Gerald's ready to rock. He just pulled it out of his back pocket. He's ready to roll. Um, I would just, I honestly don't know. Go to Vector Connect and do orders. It's like non cuckoo orders or something, or like non customer orders. You can buy samples. Just get a pan. Like just get the little starter set of it and just start using it on your own, and then you'll sell more of it, right? I mean, you could buy it, but just I, I recommend just getting a sample pan and trying it out. It'll save you some money. You'll build conviction. And it'll make you more money. Well, yeah. Yeah, get a, get a sample pan, um, and then yeah, just use it. And just you know, have fun. Again, like I just sell it because I use it myself all the time. And check, like honestly, like not like, like really not all the time. Just a couple times a week, but when I use it, I'm like, gosh, this stuff is freaking awesome, right? Um, so you'll up your conviction. Yeah, for real. Okay, good question. Thank you. Yeah, of course. What's your favorite part of, of the demo when you include the cookware, the flatware, the sporting knives? The regular knives. I mean, all of it. What's your favorite part of the demo? The part that you think that you're the that you are, do the best at when you're doing the demo with Mr. and Mrs. Jones? Ooh, that is a good question. Because I love doing demos. Um, this is hard because I guess it's two. I guess I love the beginning, just creating an atmosphere or people are open to see everything, be open with me, like just that, the beginning, just when I go from like, again, when we were in home, hi, I'm Carlos, nice to meet you, hey. And then like 15 minutes later, we're like talking about like trips that they took 20 years ago. And I'm like asking relationship advice and like, hey, what, like, what, what are some tips that you would give yourself if you could go back to your 20s? Like just, just being real with people, and you're just like talking about stuff other than Cutco and then them saying, oh, hey, like, yeah, show us what you got. Let's see it. Like, I love, like, I don't bring up Cutco. They do. Like, hey, yeah, what are you, like, what are you showing us? Yeah, go ahead, open it up. Let's see what you got. And then when I get to the close, because I have that good of a relationship, just being real with them. Like, Miss Jones, I'm going to, I'm going to show you all tomorrow how I do the, uh, the, an options close with four different things. But Coops, go out, Cassie. Uh, I just to come say what's up. Missy dog. Um, I think um, going like being able to create that open of an environment so that when I get to the close, they're totally cool with me like pitching again, 8,000, 5,000, 2,000, 1,000 dollar orders and then understanding why people get it. Right. Just, I think just creating the atmosphere of the demo is probably my favorite part. So I guess it's not one specific part. It's kind of like the beginning and then the close. Right. It's a good question. Yeah, I love that. I, yeah, I just, I'm a kind of competitive. Like I'm innovator. So like, I love just kind of solving things. So I'm just like kind of feeling someone out if they're straightforward, if they're open, like all that kind of stuff. I love kind of just like creating that atmosphere with people and just being on like the same page, I guess. So yeah, it's a good question. Okay, I, you got, you got any Casey? questions, Casey? I don't know. <laughs> but excited gonna go. for Aussie? Yeah, uh, yes. So much. Me, me and uh, Amy have just been like looking at different things that we want to do. And it's everybody too. The reps feel like it is going to be freaking bananas. It'll be cool. I know. Oh my gosh. It'll be wild. I I'm cannot hyped. wait. And I'm hyped to be there. I like bring it sooner. <laughs> right, we got like eight minutes, everybody. Whatever. Make sure nobody's in my room. I do. Have you had this happen? It like booted in you into other breakout rooms. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. I was like dropping some heat to it. I was like, oh, but I can't ever want to still. Same, same like, happened to me. Right. No, you're all good. All right. I just want to come say hi. Have a all great right. day. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. See you at A and Z. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> Put another shrimp on the body. Cool. What do you got? <laughs> I actually have a question for you, Carlos. I got one. Sure. I got an answer. What you got? <laughs> well, for me, um, I am going to talk to my own manager about this, but with the manual that we have, it is so long. What do you do with your um, trainees, so on and so forth, if they want to shorten it to where it doesn't take over an hour to get through something? That's a really good question. Um, first, you're going to be great at this job just because you set expectations for me first that you're going to ask your manager. I'm like, she knows what she's doing. Like you're, you're in the right spot. Um, I would say, if I can just be real with you, 
the time mm-hmm. I, I answered this earlier. Some of you probably heard this. How long your demo goes doesn't matter. Like I've had, and again, I, I don't do this often, but I have, I've had like two hour demos, three hour demos, but I always walk off with a four figure sale, 2000 bucks, 3000 bucks. I think when you, and like, don't make me dinner. Like, like I, I've literally done demos where I sold like an ultimate set with cookware and they like prep dinner, started it. We all ate together. We all cleaned up together. We had that like cocktail at the end of the night. And like, they, like it, it was, it was a freaking blast. And I think it's just because I create, I built enough rapport to where we were just like hanging out. So I think one, eat, like if you're struggling to build rapport, I just think one really good question to ask is like, Hey, do you have any trouble? Like hopping on the zoom. Right. And they'll say yes or no. And I'll be like, yeah, but you zoom often, use it for work at all. And then we're like, we're talking. Does that make sense? Like we're on common ground. We're just like hanging out, that kind of stuff. And then we're just like kind of being co-humans first. And then when you can do that, like they're, they're open, they'll listen to your demo. I would also recommend taking, like, if you feel like things are getting kind of stiff, I would take a little bit of a break to build some rapport. Just talk about like other stuff. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The reason is I'm sure you're getting the feeling of like tense and like, Oh, they want to go. You just got to open them back up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So the, like the timing you're done, doesn't really matter. If they think it's too long, build better report. If you think it's too long, then have better conviction that you can sell a lot. It'll be worth the time. Cause I didn't make, you know, $500,000 in two hours at another job that I've had. And someone <laughs> on the other end of that didn't get as good of a hookup as Cupco. So that's a good question. question. That really helps me out a lot. I wanted to see, ask you that before I talk to my manager was all. Good. So great question. It was really good. Again, I don't think you're probably the only one that had that because you know we've all had those demos. Where it's like oh. yeah. I get it. I get it. Cool. Let's go down, Tanner. Much. It's going good. Learning a lot. Cool. Yeah. It's like a fire hose, right? You're just like, there's so much to learn. Just, just take little bits here, take little bits there, implement them. You know, you have, you have enough knowledge that it could last you like the summer, you know what I mean? So just, you know, take what you like, use it, implement it. Uh, we got like four minutes left folks. What you got? If I were to come yeah, to you so asking for advice, but not asking you specifically for advice, who would you, who would you send me to? Oh, for sales? What, what, what? sales management? Like what, what do you think? Um, uh, good question. We'll start off with sales advice. Who do I go to? Zach Molzer is great. He's ridiculous. Uh, you said Zach? Zach, Zach Molzer is fire. Uh, I would say... I mean, we got four minutes. That's I, I would say go to him. To yeah. okay. And then your uh, your take on the management side of the of the, of the job. Uh, how you like management and advice for management? Time management. Time management. That's a good question. How do you time manage? Oh, time management. Or like yeah. time management with being a man. Uh, both. Okay. Uh, uh, short answer, have time and schedule each plan. That's one thing. Like actually make an appointment with yourself to manage your time and show up for it. Don't like let, the, you know how like you've heard phone time is sacred? Your planning time is sacred. That's the first thing is like, schedule but actually use it right um, i would say secondly things simple and have objectives right because like for me i don't know how many hours i work but i know when i'm getting stuff done that i feel really good that i'm getting stuff done you know what i mean and then crazy when i get more stuff done i have less stuff to manage so it's easier for me to divide, dive into other things and then um I'd probably say carve out time to do what you want. Nobody wants to just work all the time, man. Like it sucks. That's all you're doing. And again, there's times where the call, like your fast start. Yes. SE two push. Yes. January trip. Yes. Like there's times you want to turn it on and turn it off. But I think also planning things that are just kind of fulfilling for you will have more fulfillment and it won't seem like as much of a chore. And then I would say with management, just like partner with your manager. I was working 40 hours a week in another job, 18 credit hours at my college. I was selling and I was an assistant in the office. I actually really suck with managing my time. I just talk with Josh every single week and it really helps. Right. 
And then I made sure that when I was working, I was effective. I wasn't just like doing stuff. Like I was, I was getting results when I was working, which sucks. And like, I, you know, it, it, like sometimes it sucks to always be on. Right. But that's why I plan time to not be on. Right? And that's also why I keep in mind that I'd rather have the pain. Of business. Why didn't you guys? I'd much rather have played the pain no, yeah. And then with the management side, just talk to your manager. I, I, I love it. It's so demanding, but it's so gratifying, right? I mean, we literally have like 30 seconds, so like I can't really say a whole ton, but I love it. It's something interesting. I, I kind of think of it like college. People say like, it's a, I, I don't think it's a waste. I think it's how you use the resources, right? Same exact thing with management. Like, what are you using it for? The experience, the people skills, the leadership, the fulfillment, the contribution. Like, what is the reason that you're doing it? And then it's really easy to demand a lot of yourself because it doesn't feel like someone else is doing it. It's like what you want to do. It's a good question. Cool. And this is, by the way, it's coming from someone's like, is, I'm not the best at managing my time, but it gets done and it works really well. All right, we got time for like one more. James. Home base touchdown. What's going on, man? <laughs> one more question. I'm ready. Somebody, did somebody ask a question or am I open for another question? Anyone got a question? I mean, Maxwell can go, go ahead. Good to go. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, we were going to ask just about the, uh, the sales, uh, the closing yeah, gifts. The closing gift team. He said it, yeah. The, uh, I would ask your division manager. I honestly don't know. I'm not one. I think you have to be at like 150 or 200 in personal sales to get involved with that. And I don't know what exceptions are like, but just right. ask your division manager. Like, if they want you to do it, then, you know. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Good question. That's a really sick layer to the business. It's awesome. What are you looking forward to most from tomorrow? Tomorrow? I mean, I don't know if this is kind of selfish, but I'm just looking forward to giving people something that they can just take and use and just really like crush their results. Um, again, I paid thousands for like what I'm going to teach tomorrow. I'm really excited about giving it for free. Like I just love people taking things and using them and like seeing people on the reports later on. So I think just like the contribution aspect of it, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's always like just my favorite thing is like what I'm giving, you know what I mean? Like when we did in-person round tables, like I would always want to last once because if people had questions, I'd always say to ask them. Like I love giving, you know, so I'd say it's probably my favorite thing. And then I guess the, uh, I guess the Top Gun breakout, I think that'll be cool too. That'd be fun. Yeah. Cool. Oh, are they not closing us out? Well, I mean, yeah, if they're not closing us out, I mean, I can answer their question. By the way, don't feel obligated, by the way, right? You're not going to hurt my feelings if you peace out. But if you got questions, I'm ready to, you know, answer. I know it's kind of hard after, like, learning all day. You're like, I don't, like, my brain is fried. I don't even know what to ask. What do you got, Joseph? So coming back, going, going back to that thing you were talking, when you were talking about routines, um, like I find routines are very helpful because they let me do something constructive when the day can easily get away from me. Yes. Um, and that way I'm not at the end of the day, I'm like, I did absolutely nothing useful <laughs> today. Yep. I feel that. So. I guess you, it, yeah, and I guess it's like if you set up a routine when you think about it, kind of like that planning, but kind of more long term. What do you, um, so kind of planning, but more long term, you can set a destination, set what you need to do to get there, and then just do that, you know, and then flesh out a bit of a routine to get there, and you just do that. And you don't have to worry about that in like the meantime. So you can just focus for being in the moment and doing the things that you're supposed to as you dictated. Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of both. Like when you're driving, you're not looking right. If, you, or later, um, if you're driving, you're not looking right in front of your car. You're looking straight ahead. 
You know what I mean? You're focused on the purpose, right? But you yeah. got your foot on the pedal, you're turning your blinkers on, you're steering, right? So like you're focused on the purpose, but you're still maintaining those rituals while you're doing them. So I think it is a balance of both and do what gives you energy. Like this might be a shock. I'm actually really introverted, dude. I just love just like time to myself and it gives me energy. You know what I mean? I love reading. You know what I mean? I just like the things that give me energy, I do, you know? And I, I really like, I really, and I'll be honest, like I start, I had my conversations with Mike about this yesterday. I've like, I've not been doing that lately. And like, it's really, it's like been noticeable, you know? So for me, I know when I'm doing what gives me energy and the things that like help me be consistent, I know I'm going to show up better. And like, it's kind of like a demo. You don't want to look in too much into one demo. It's like zoom out a little bit. Look at the week, look at the month, that kind of stuff. Same exact thing with like your rituals. Like you'll fall short, man. I was supposed to drink a gallon of water today. I only drank like probably 50 ounces, right? And I'm like, hey, I, like, I, I wish I would have. It's not like, hey, I got tomorrow. I've done it four out of the other days out of the week. It's like, it's cool. Like give yourself some grace. You're not gonna be perfect ever, right? Uh, but I think just doing what gives you energy, I think is really important. Focus on the long-term purpose, but just like keep up like the maintenance of like doing the rituals that, you know, serve you best. That's right, thank you. Well, that's a good question. So when do we all get to field train with you? <laughs> oh God, I wanted, I miss doing demos so bad. I love even the no sale, like all that I got. I just, I miss the experience. It's so, so unique. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll post in the in the region group when I start doing demos again. <laughs> good question. Good question. Cool. Anything else, folks? I'll stay on for like another 10, and then I got to get rolling because I committed to a date. So, again, oh, nice. you see that, by the way, setting that boundary, right? I'm like, I got stuff to do. You know what I mean? So, again, like, I got you. It's really important. Um, So, like, region group as in, like, Facebook region group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Good question. It just transparent. I, pro- I probably do demos for a while. Just be transparent with you. I'm, I'm, I'm running. I'm running the business. But if I do, I'll let you know, brother. Question. Any other preguntas? By the way, on that ritual thing that you're asking, I think setting boundaries is really important, right? It's very easy to like transition to work and per- you know what I mean? Just kind of, cause like Cutco is something, I guess this would be a better question to answer Leah's question before is one of the things that I struggle with is it's something that you can all, you can always be working on. You know what I mean? Like at any time you could be doing something productive. So I think setting up your schedule and just like honoring boundaries of when you're going to work and when you're not, you know, it's really important too. Okay. Yeah. Just blow yeah. That, that makes sense. Cause it's like, Especially if you share like a workspace, but it's also your like play space. Yes. Having those time boundaries and the discipline of those is, I think, really important because otherwise you'll just be like, I came out down here to do phone time and now I'm playing like Half Life 2. Who knows? Yes. And then later on, when you're playing Half Life 2, you're like, man, I should have phoned earlier. Like, you feel guilty about it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Question. All righty, folks. Any uh, anything else? I'll say on the boss is calling though. Make my girlfriend. Not like my boss. I'll stay on to see if anyone else pops in. But yeah, again, like, again, even my guys left, you, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you peace out, I promise. <laughs> you, by the way, use these though. Like we, we literally only have round tables like a couple, like a couple times a year. So feel free to share whoever you want to share with or ask everyone to ask. Carolyn! The other CT. What up? 
It's good initials. It's a good sign. You have any questions for me? <laughs> How you get so fine? Don't Ooh. always ask me in training. I should ask that to my customers more often. Miss Jones, <laughs> if Mister Jones is there, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, I love I love creating like enough rapport where you can have fun like that kind of stuff. Do that. Yeah. It's cool. Is that a ring light uh, you're using? Two of them. Got a little small one there, big one there. That way it doesn't have to be right in my face. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's a cool. Nice. Yeah, and check this out. I got different uh, oh, different effects. Look at that. Woo! Yeah. That way, if I if I, if I if I'm not tan, I can turn the yellow ones on. So you know, get that, RGB. Get that lighting. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Get that lighting tan going. <laughs> cool. You can ask whatever. Just gonna start cleaning up my stuff. Uh. What are some of the books that are on your shelf back there? They must be pretty important if you have them at your workstation. Yes, they definitely are. Uh, well, one that is not in here that I'm reading right now is um, The Problem Is In Their Paycheck, How to Attract Top Talent, Build a Thriving Company Culture. That one's great for like management. Um, I'm a big philosophy guy. So 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson is just a great one. I think what applied to this business let me grab my mic. I think what would apply to this business. Looks like they bumped him again. I'm sure he'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. So it happened again. I don't know why they took me out of here. Don't know why. Um, Welcome back. <laughs> what, what was the what was the last book that you heard? Uh, twelve is the twelve. Twelve rules for life. I think would apply to this business. No excuses by Brian Tracy's great. Um, grit by Angela Duckworth is great. Oh, I actually don't have. Oh, a, a lot of my favorite ones I actually loan out to people. So m most of my favorites are on here. Um. The uh, the power of now by Eckhart Tolle is just phenomenal. That's the a power, power, the power, of power of now. Now power of now. Yeah, the power of now by Eckhart Tolle is great. Um, I'm trying to think of the other books I've loaned out. Start with why by um, Gerald. Help me out. Start with why by Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek um, is great. And then. This one isn't really business related, but I think it's just a good life book is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. It's like, it's like a hundred pages. It's such a, like, that was, bye, it's brother. Um, uh, how do you spell Paulo? Like, how do you spell that name? Let me look it up. Just make sure I get it right. Um, okay, cool. We're closing up. Um, here, let me put it in. It is... Sorry, what the sorry, my I got so many tabs open. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. feel like well. So oh, the okay. alchemist. You put in chat, got it. The alchemist, Paul Coelho. Yeah, that's a really good one. There you go. Bam, Gerald's got you. Yeah, I, that's the, the hard Amazon thing. Book. Is like, like that's the hard thing is like most of my favorite ones I actually don't have because I just like loan them out to people. I'm like, hey, yeah, you, yeah. You know, Same. Crazy. Yeah, definitely okay. feel that Good question. Cool, cool. Anything else that they're put? They're dropping the hammer timing wise. So, Carlos, I was told there's a shorter version of the demo than what we use. Yeah, <laughs> I I wouldn't use it. Right, I would just use what you're good at and trained on. Um, you can't. There's also a much longer version than ours too. Um, I mean, I mean, you can. I just like. I wouldn't want to have to like retrain you on everything. 
you know? Um, and yeah, a lot of people bring up the timing of demos. I like, I, they can be an hour, they can be two hours, three. I mean, they have a good experience. I have a good experience. They get some good cut co, or even if they don't, I get some good recommendations. Like it's, it's worth the investment in the time, you know? Yeah. I've learned I've learned that usually if they have a if they have a question about the time or a concern about the time it's because they're not confident with how they're doing the demo and that's coming across to who they're talking with. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I I, I own my demos. Like yeah, mo most of them are not that long, but I've had plenty just cuz like like Carolyn, if I did a demo for you and I never met you before, it'd be a long one. And it'd be awesome. <laughs> Right, but you know, what, you know what I mean? And it wouldn't be bad when I'm like, oh crap, I went, you know, 20 minutes. Out. Like, it's a blast. So it's all about the experience. Oh, yeah. You know, I feel like I don't know if my customers have fun, but I definitely have fun. Yeah, definitely. And I think just like match their energy too. You know what I mean? If something like for me, it's kind of tough, but if someone's like a little more laid back, I'm more laid back. And I'll try to like bring their energy up throughout the demo, you know? Um, but if someone's really open and like merchanty, I'm just going to ask them a question, just like let them talk you know, everyone's favorite voice to hear is their own, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I love just kind of like letting them talk. What do you got, Joseph? So, um, I guess when you're talking about like, you know, sometimes demos go long. So I assume like when that happens and obviously you're fine with it, it's because you don't have demos after that in the time slot after yeah 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 like those ones that are that long like if i have one back to back like i kind of like i gotta cut it short a little bit i guess but i mean i'm not i don't really cut it short i just like i'm just aware you know what i mean yeah I'm aware of everything like you, you can move pretty quickly throughout the demo that's also why i said um just doing more demos you'll be able to develop that intuition you'll know right like when you like you kind of made your point and then you can like move on um for shorter demos though little tip get on the fair and show team because you learn how to sell Cutco, not in like an hour, but in like literally like five, 10 minutes. Okay. So I sold ultimate sets to people in like 15 minutes and they don't even know what knives come in it just because I'm selling the concepts and I learned how to do that in the fair and show team. That sounds amazing. It's pretty freaking sweet, right? I don't do like my in-home, well, not in-home, but like one-on-one -on -one appointments like that really. Um, I mean, I can, but I feel like when I'm closing, I have to explain a lot more. And I'd rather explain on the front end and then be confident by the time that I get closed and I know I'm going to get a yes, then like move quickly. And then as I'm about to close, have to like catch backpedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good question. All right, well, let's let Carlos get to his evening. I know he uh, has some plans. Yeah, I, I, ran, I was on. I ran training today. Yeah, it's, uh, we, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Uh, what, you're tired? Yeah. Huh? I said, what? You're tired? Yeah. Yeah, right. I don't know what tired means. I'm not tired. Yeah, no, I just. Uh, I drink, uh, I, I eat and drink and sustain myself, but I need to go to bed. Yeah. Adios, well, folks. Thank you for staying on. I really hope you got a ton of value. Um, have a great night, everybody. I'll talk to you all later. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Pleasure right. meeting. Appreciate you, Carlos. Absolutely. You too. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks, Carlos. Bye, Carolyn.